Thanks, guys. Nice to have you up here. Um, so uh, I'll tell you who they are, and I'll tell you exactly uh, a little bit more detail. We've got uh, Jeremy uh, H. in here, the CEO of uh, Data Robot. Uh, Nicholas Merrick on the end there is CEO of DreamQuark. And of course, Brett King, I'm sure you're now all very familiar with uh, uh, the CEO of uh, Move-In and uh, much else besides. I guess we'll, we'll say you've got your Move-In hat on for this panel for now, but uh, uh, well, maybe also probably the Probably more the futurist. The yeah, the author slash futurist, so, I guess. Uh, Kick off, uh, uh, we'll kick off uh, as we do with uh, our panels here, just to get a little bit of a, a better sense of exactly what it is that uh, all of you guys do. Uh, Nicolas, if you would like to start. Yes, so at Quark, basically what we do is that we started with the objective to create a lot of value with artificial intelligence to financial services, so bank, insurance, asset managers, and we identify that there are some pain points, in particular the explainability of these new algorithms, deep learning. Uh, is there anyone in the room that does not know about deep learning. So three years ago when I started, uh, I would have seen a lot of uh, arm raised. Now it's uh, much better. And the idea is that we uh, work to uh, provide you with solutions that are really performing, easy to use, and also uh, at the end explainable so that you can uh, work with a new GDPR coming live uh, 25th of May. Thank you. Brett. So I, I uh, started uh, before moving. I started as an author in this space. and. I've technology uh, advisor, worked with HSBC and, and Citi and a bunch of others, uh, but started writing about technology's impact on society a few years ago. I run a radio show out of New York called Breaking Banks, which is uh, the largest uh, fintech dedicated uh, radio show podcast audience globally. And then of course that led to the formation of Movin as well as a, a way to sort of explicitly show that. But I'm very, very interested in the intersection of technology and behavior and how that impacts society. So I, I, that's where I sit. Jeremy. So, uh, Des. Yeah. So I was a data scientist uh, before. I was a data scientist for about 10 years and then started a company to try to automate my job. We started this about five, five and a half years ago. Uh, so for the last five and a half years, I've been working on uh, automating the job of a data scientist or automating, you know, creating these AI algorithms. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think we've been pretty successful. We've raised uh, $124 million. Uh, we're probably one of the most, uh, the, the largest and most successful uh, pure AI startups um, in, in the world. And, um, you know, FinTech is, uh, you know, by, if, we, if I count my customers, um, you know, FinTech is the segment where I have the most customers. If I count by revenue, banking is the segment where we have the most revenue. So, and these two sectors play, uh, obviously, kind of uh, are important to each other. So, it's uh, this is a uh, this is AI and FinTech is uh, pretty much you know fifty percent of like what I'm what I'm uh, thinking about uh, these days. So, you've raised just very quickly one hundred twenty-four million. Uh, Brett, what has Movin raised? Uh, so far, um, it's going to be. Uh, about 80 million by the end of April. And Nicola? So we are French, so uh, what we see <laughs> is that uh, there is uh, less, less investment in AI, and this is a pity, I think. So we raised three million, but now working to, to raise m many more. And uh, also, uh, we have successful customer with our solution, so uh, the market is coming on, uh, on our solution as well, so. I can I mean, do the translation, so three million raised in the French market is equal, you know, multiplied by about 20 to get to uh, equivalent, so it's very closer to me than it might look. Thanks for putting that into perspective. I have to say the closest I came to uh, launching a, an AI startup was uh, losing at chess to uh, deep learning founder Demis Hassapis. Um, now, I was seven years old at the time, <laughs> and um, I absolutely got trounced by him, which was quite hard for a seven-year-old to take being beaten by a five-year-old, but in retrospect, Maybe it wasn't so bad, after all. Um, but look, AI has promised much, but, but how much is artificial? How much is intelligence? Can you just give us a sense of what is artificial intelligence doing right now in the world of fintech? What can it be doing? What will it be doing? And what isn't it doing? And what can't it do? And what won't it do? Um, Jeremy, why don't we start with you? Uh, so so I, think, I think today AI is, is, is allowing um, you know, uh, fintech players that are you know, they're not as constrained as the large, uh, the large financial institutions um, to, to very quickly make use of uh, all the information that's available. Um, we see, 
we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of the, the, the smaller fintech players uh, that come in all these different markets uh, um, really create a lot more powerful, um, you know, models and, you know, predictions. Uh, um, you know, when you're lending money um, or you're, you're, you're in the payment space or um, it, it turns out that, you know, being able to predict things like will this person pay me back is, is really important. So um, to the extent that you can get into inside these subpopulations to figure out who are the, who are the viable uh, people to us to lend to. Um, I, I think that, that's, that's, a, that's the biggest uh, the impact I've seen for, from AI in, in, in FinTech is just uh, the, the companies that are willing to kind of move fast and take advantage of all the data that's out there. Um, I, we're, we're seeing I mean, you get very, some very, very successful FinTech uh, companies across the globe, I'm sure you're aware, um, by leveraging this, the data available and leveraging the technology available in AI. And Brett, I guess you'd put moving among them. Well, I, I think uh, if you were to ask the average person what is artificial intelligence, they would probably think of something you see in Hollywood movies, you know, so, um, you know, the D1000 Terminator or Eva, X, you know, out of Ex Machina or something like that. Um, but that in uh, terms of evolution of artificial intelligence is some way off. That's what we call AGI or artificial general intelligence. Right now we're still in the machine learning stage where we're teaching machines to recognize patterns, cognition and, um, you know, sort of learn what humans do. So, and the next stage after AGI, of course, is uh, strong AI where we have, you know, intelligences that are more powerful than humans, but that is probably some decades off. But in, in banking, I think we probably, or fintech, we probably look at two core pieces of the puzzle right now, which is uh, conversational AI, so chatbots leading to smart assistance where you have that interface with the customer.